As Karl Marx said, philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. Dialectics is not only a scientific method, but also a tool for changing the world. It is the logic of Marxism. Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to analyze what is perhaps one of the most important and unique elements of Marxism, the methodology of dialectical materialism. Dialectical materialism, or just dialectics for short, is the methodology that Marx and Engels pioneered in order to identify and make sense of the forces that shape past and present societies, and to create a theory of social and economic conflict and change. Now, why should radicals or leftists care about methodology? Methodology is important because it refers to the processes of inquiry that bring into focus the full range of changes and interactions that occur in the world and helps us identify which variables are causing change. Methodology deals with questions of how we collect evidence, what theories we use to make sense of evidence, the assumptions underlying the phenomena that we're observing, and how we make knowledge valid and authoritative. So methodology is the starting point when we want to make claims about how society or the world operate. And as leftists, our task is not simply to explain our reality, but also to improve it. From that end, the ability to think dialectically, to identify areas where society is vulnerable to rupture and change, is greatly beneficial in guiding revolutionary political practice. Familiarity with the dialectical method in particular is imperative to fully grasping Marx and Engels' revolutionary conclusions about capitalism. It is through the lens of dialectics that we see the pivotal role of class conflict in driving historical progress and change, and the interconnectedness of struggles against the exploitation and oppression wrought by capitalism. In short, Marx and Engels could not have arrived at their understanding of capitalism nor could they have prescribed the revolutionary political strategies and practices that they did without a firm grasp of dialectics. So let's learn about it. The term dialectics originates from ancient Greece, and it referred to the process of seeking the truth through dialogue where a back and forth between two people or many people would lead to a refinement of political or philosophical understandings. Plato's Republic, for example, is an account of a dialogue between Socrates and his companions, where they seek to discover what justice is. The dialogue would follow a familiar structure. Somebody would propose a concept of what they thought justice meant, Socrates would challenge his companions by poking holes in their statements or, you know, finding exceptions to that statement. And that would lead to a more complex and nuanced concept of justice because it would account for the original proposition and Socrates' objections. For example, one of the first proposed definitions of justice in Book One of the Republic is made by Cephalus, who argues that justice is doing good acts for your friends and evil acts for your enemies. Socrates then engages in a number of, you know, back and forth questions that poke holes in that line of thought until he and his companions conclude that harming anyone, whether they are an enemy or a friend, is categorically an act of injustice. And throughout the book, it is this process of a statement being proposed and then contradicted, and then as a result of the contradiction being improved upon or changed, that the essence of what justice is, is refined and revealed. The 19th century German philosopher Hegel was instrumental to the formulation of dialectics as a methodological system that sought to understand how society is structured and how it evolves over time. Similar to the ancient Greeks, Hegel's method assumed that contradiction between opposing sides was the catalyst to refinement and progress. But for Hegel, this progress came not just in the refinement of a political idea, like what is justice, but also in the improvement of social ethics or eras over time. Hegel centered his theory of social evolution and change on what he called Geist, which we might refer to as social consciousness. It can be broadly understood as encompassing the goals, feelings, beliefs, and concerns that most members of a society share. 
It also shaped a people's self-understanding and the practices which they regarded as appropriate, the behavioral norms and social relations in which they engaged, and the kind of world that they created for themselves, including in economic or material ways. In other words, we can think of it sort of as like the ideologies or ideas that a society has about itself and how those ideas are going to impact how that society chooses to structure itself, including in terms of who has power. Hegel argued that history was ultimately unfolding towards the highest state of refinement of Geist and that it would lead to progressive evolution of human societies and the material conditions that they chose to bring into fruition as they advanced. The development of Geist, or in other words, historical progress, advanced through the resolution of contradictions in a process that can be called the negation of the negation. For Hegel, all things in existence had contradictions embedded within them, forces that were at polar opposites with one another. To use a simple caricature of how we can understand this process, we can start with calling one of those forces a thesis and say that it's a moment in time in which something appears stable or appears to have a stable definition. A second force we can call the antithesis, and it arises because it, there comes to be a restrictiveness or something limiting about the nature of a certain concept or phenomenon, which destabilizes its very existence. I think one good example of this is the liberal concept of freedom in capitalist society and how it contains within itself its opposite, oppression and servitude. A worker is free to work for whomever he or she likes, but working for someone else means being subjected to their authority, momentarily suspending their ability to have a voice in how they work, what they produce, or even the right to own what they produce with their own labor. So freedom is inherently contradictory and contains within itself its opposite. You have the freedom to choose whom you are subjected to. The polar tensions that exist within concepts, ideas, or phenomena can lead to a destabilization of that concept and transformation. This moment of transformation was called in the original German Aufheben, and is typically translated in English as sublation or synthesis. This concept of sublation has the contradictory meaning of both preserving and canceling, meaning elements of truth or elements that could lead to higher stages of development that were present in both the thesis and antithesis can be preserved and carried on throughout history, while those that were false would be canceled out. This implies that past imperfect stages of history that have not yet reached the full potential of Geist nevertheless contain within themselves the potential to do so or contain elements of truth that will allow them to do so. Contradictions work themselves out until the absolute truth of what exists, the absolute truthful essence of what freedom is, for example, comes into fruition and reaches its highest stage. In our example, we might imagine that the contradictions inherent within the manifestation of freedom in capitalist society can give rise to a synthesis in which freedom is extended to mean the freedom to control one's labor and not merely to control or to choose whom one is oppressed by on a nine to five basis. So contradiction is a driving engine of historical change takes elements of both the thesis and antithesis and brings forth new, more advanced forms of social relations and new paradigms. And this process is called the negation of the negation because the synthesis here, or sublation, is negating the antithesis that gave rise to the conflict in the first place. Marx and Engels took inspiration from Hegel's formulation of dialectical methodology. But whereas in Hegel, dialectics was primarily driven by changing non-material forces, or Geist, for Marx, the evolution of human history was catalyzed by the contradictions in material forces, or what we might call economic forces. The contradictions in particular manifested in the form of class conflict, with Marx famously saying in the Communist Manifesto that the history of all hitherto existing societies is the history of class struggles. This conflict was born over a struggle in which one class produced the material wealth of society and the other class erected a social ordering, including by controlling the legal systems, the ideologies, and the economic power of the system to appropriate the wealth produced by the laboring classes. 
Marx identifies this pattern of class conflict throughout history, including in the forms of slavery, feudalism, and capitalism. Similar to Hegel's conviction that human history was unfolding in a progressive way, Marx and Engels argued that each successive resolution to class conflict, in particular historical epics, resulted in a transformation of political and social relations that we might say were emancipatory in some way, shape, or form relative to the society that existed before it. We might see this in the expansion of concepts like freedom or democracy, or in the advancement of knowledge, skills, and autonomy. The working class in capitalism, for example, has much more freedom to choose whom to work for compared to slaves or feudal serfs who had no choice in the matter. In the Communist Manifesto, Marx also describes how new forms of property relations under capitalism resulted in political and social gains for the proletariat, saying, for example, the bourgeoisie supply the proletariat with fresh elements of enlightenment and progress, or that the bourgeoisie itself, therefore, supply the proletariat with its own elements of political and general education. In other words, it furnishes the proletariat with weapons for fighting the bourgeoisie. It is this progressive pattern of resolution to class conflict that led Marx to believe that the final resolution to class conflict in capitalist society would be communism, the final form of social and economic relations that abolished class hierarchies and instituted genuine democracy, both outside and inside the workplace. The Marxian approach to dialectics starts with the materialist, concrete facts about reality as a way to understand where our ideologies come from, rather than assume that changes in the ideologies of an epic translate into how societies organize themselves in material or economic ways as Hegel did. This inverts Hegel's process of understanding social change by centering it on material or economic foundations rather than the ideological ones that stem from Geist. As Marx stated in the afterword to the second edition of Capital, in Hegel, the dialectic is standing on its head. It must be turned right side up again if you would discover the rational kernel within the mystical shell. Or as Engel stated in Ludwig Feuerbach in the end of classical German philosophy, Hegel was not simply put aside. On the contrary, a start was made from his revolutionary side, described above, from the dialectical method. But in its Hegelian form, this method was unusable. According to Hegel, dialectics is the self-development of the concept. The absolute concept does not only exist, unknown from where, from eternity, it is also the actual living soul of the whole existing world. This ideological perversion had to be done away with. Thereby, the dialectic of concepts itself became merely the conscious reflex of the dialectical motion of the real world, and thus the dialectic of Hegel was turned over, or rather, turned off its head, on which it was standing, and placed upon its feet. What Engels is saying here is that Hegel's concept of historical progress being driven primarily by contradictions on the ideological axis, rather than the material one of class conflict, was an ideological perversion. However, it nevertheless contained within itself an element of truth in terms of its methodological understanding of contradiction as the driving motor of social change. So now that we've covered the historical context of dialectics, Hegel's method, and the ways that Marx and Engels inverted Hegel by centering historical change on material conditions, our next video is going to cover three of the most fundamental concepts of Marxian dialectics, change, contradiction, and the interconnectedness or, or wholeness of reality.